Can anyone answer me? Apa yang you faham uh, from going through this course? What is the outcome that you are expected to uh, to complete at the end of the course? Anyone? Uh, kalau nak cakap kena unmute, saya tak dengar. Sebab semuanya mute ni. Dengar tak saya punya soalan? Saya faham uh, Masih tengah berfikir Tapi mm -hmm. saya rasa outcome dia pun Berkenaan dengan Different type of Civil Litigation or Something uh, So advocacy right lah uh, kot maybe Advocacy apa? Right Advocacy, right. Okay. Better than that? Ada. Saya tak berapa pasti sebab saya pun baru dengar benda ni. Belajar advocacy teknik. Belajar advocacy teknik. Yes, okay. So, basically memang uh, untuk dalam benda pun, because I, I'll be taking over for criminal uh, trial. So, civil trial is somebody else, eh? Um, you have to differentiate uh, dua eh, because dia tak sama. So, uh, how uh, to conduct trials in court lah, basically. So, it can either be criminal case or a civil case. Or, okay, sebab this one we are talking about criminal trial. Trial dengan appeal is different. So, we are not talking about appeal cases. It will be a trial cases. So, you have to differentiate between two lah. But the more appeal doesn't involve witnesses. Huh? So this one is for trial. Trial means perbicaraan lah. Huh? Hmm, um, perbicaraan yang melibatkan saksi. Uh, okay. So uh, today we'll start with the general things first. Uh, what is advocacy? Okay. Uh, um, uh, etiquette. Um, just uh, nak tahu you all ada satu etiquette course tak? Ada tak uh, faculty uh, prepare one etiquette course? Professional ethics. Sorry? Professional ethics. Ada. Hmm. Ah, so, so that one applies lah, basically. Eh? Okay. Uh, mungkin professional ethics tu uh, uh, quite general, dia akan involve in, 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 in any other things as well. But yang uh, that we're going to teach here is basic etiquette in court, basically lah. Huh? So, okay, uh, Dekat singkot dalam mahkamah. Okay, uh, so saya start dulu lah. Dah ada 60 orang at least. Uh, uh, you can start dulu lah ya. Yeah. If you have any question along the way, uh, please do not hesitate to ask. Um, actually, sepatutnya this course has to be a face-to-face. -face sebab um, dia practical. Uh, practical. Tapi sebab uh, because of COVID-19 uh, punya um, situation plus um, saya pun di dalam kawasan PKPB so saya diceras <laughs> kalau saya nak keluar daripada sini saya kena mohon dan berbalai um, but whatever it is since you all pun tak tak diwajibkan balik lagi uh, apa ni saya kena pun semua uh, online uh, courses so I'll just give you the uh, theoretical part first nanti when we are allowed to go for face to face punya classes then I will actually show you the practical side of it. Yeah? So 
So basically, the first thing ni most likely it will be a theoretical more, more towards theoretical aspect of it, eh? Alright. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Um. Mm. All right, the advocacy. Uh, basically, what is advocacy? The act or process of supporting a cause or proposal, the act of or process of educating something. Ini daripada dictionary punya definition lah ya. But basically in legal term, it refers to the art of persuasion. Okay. Hello. How do you persuade people to to uh, to agree with you? How do you persuade people to support you? Right. Basically itulah dia uh, advocacy in court. Or how do you... Uh, uh, get people to sometimes to get people to actually disagree with something okay uh, um, not necessarily to agree with you but to disagree with maybe uh, another person's uh, statement or another person's opinion yeah? so this is part and parcel of uh, advocacy yeah so that's why they kata uh, in legal terms, advocacy is basically refers, basically refers to the art of persuasion. Yeah? All right. Trial advocacy. So what do you mean by trial advocacy? It's actually the branch of knowledge concerned with making counsels and other advocates more effective in trial. Um, it's an essential trade skill for litigators. They basically technique lah, macam uh, uh, Azia cakap tadi. It's it's basically uh, to teach the technique of uh, perbicaraan, technique technique uh, mengendalikan perbicaraan. Okay. And biasanya this uh, were taught in law school lah, uh, like you all sekarang ni, uh, belajar. When you are being, uh, when you are pursuing your uh, post grad, uh, this is where trial advocacy is taught. But basically, uh, at this juncture, at law schools, you are basically taught about the theory of it, and we can some practical aspect of it, but not entirely uh, the whole process. Eh? Because um, what happens in court, what happens uh, during trial, is basically different. Eh? It's different. And sometimes there are situations whereby you don't expect things to happen this way. Okay, so there are many things that you will have to experience to actually become a good litigator. So a good litigator uh, normally has excellent trial advocacy skills. So ni sebenarnya actually trial advocacy ni something that you have to brush up. It's a skill that you have to experience. You gain knowledge, you gain the experience by uh, going through the process, yeah? going through the actual process. Okay. Hasil banyak yang masuk ya. Okay. Okay, try advocacy. Dia punya basic principle, be brief. Alright. Be brief ni, um, generally it applies. Okay, kadang-kadang dia terpakai. But sometimes you need to be, um, not to be brief, kadang-kadang, okay? It depends on the situation. This is basically the general principle, but it cannot be said to apply across the board. Be brief, apa maksudnya? Okay, contohnya, uh, for you to be brief in your questions, okay? For you to be brief in uh, what, you, uh, what you expect from your witness, okay? Or sometimes even be brief um, uh, to uh, the litigate uh, to sorry to the judge as well. Okay, but um, especially for prosecutors, for prosecutors, uh, you have to be brief. Sebab you need to be precise. You need to be exact. 
okay, you need to be accurate. Sometimes, bila contohnya macam soalan ni panjang, if your questions are long, it uh, complicate matters. It makes people feel more confused. Okay? So normally for prosecutors, we advise them to be brief whenever they are asking questions. Uh, likewise, um, for counsels as well, counsel lawyers as well. But sometimes for defense counsel, there are moments where they have to be. Apa orang kata, um, you cannot be brief. Why? Because you simply want to manipulate. You want to manipulate and you want to make things complicated for the other party. Right? Uh, contohnya soalan yang kita biasa dengar, uh, double negative ataupun two questions in one. Itu tak brief tu, itu semua panjang-panjang tu. But that is the technique. So, uh, it may apply, it may not apply. So, these are basically the general one, the general principle, but it depends on the situation. Eh? Uh, be positive, right? Be positive. Sama lah. Huh? And then be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you want, it apply across the board. Okay. Um, soalan, contohnya, soalan yang uh, me uh, confusing. Huh? Soalan yang... Uh, Soalan-soalan yang apa dah confusing dalam bahasa Melayu. Uh, tak apalah. Biar faham ya. Eh? Confusing. Soalan-soalan mengelirukan. Okey. Soalan-soalan yang mengelirukan saksi anda, especially your own witness, should be avoided. Okay. The best possible avoid soalan-soalan yang mengelirukan saksi masing-masing. Okay. If you intend to use uh, confusing questions against the opposing party, opposing party's witness, then it's up to you. Sometimes that good, it is good, sometimes it is not. Why I say that? Because sometimes it is good, you make them confused. Dia pun kadang-kadang tak pasti apa, dia, apa jawapan dia. Or sometimes it is not so good bila you uh, give confusing questions to the other party which cause him or her to give further explanation. Sebab kadang-kadang soalan yang uh, yang menyebabkan saksi itu memberi uh, explanation yang lebih huh, akan menjadikan Case dia lebih kuat. Yeah? Because when you explain something, your case becomes stronger. Right? So, be careful uh, when you think that you want to confuse somebody because it might backfire. Okay. okay um, keep it simple. Okay, keep it simple. Uh, keep it simple, of course. Um, kalau boleh, jangan... Um, yelah. It is an it is the opposite of making confusion questions. Eh? Okay, sometimes keep it simple uh, uh, is way better. Right? Kadang orang kata, oh saya cakap keep it simple, keep it simple because uh, it makes it easier to understand, right? Provide details. Uh, ini bila soalan-soalan yang memerlukan penjelasan, terutamanya especially when you refer to um, expert witnesses. Yeah? Expert witnesses, they need to provide you with details, all right? Okay, and then provide motives. Okay, although in criminal law, the Malaysia ni, motives is not, um, bukan salah satu elements to prove the charge, you know? but sometimes this will have some effect to the mind of the judge. Okay, walaupun motif ni bukan salah satu element untuk membuktikan pertuduhan, but it may, it may, uh, cause uh, the judge or the juror ke, uh, apa ni, the, the person on the bench to to think of something. Oh, possible juga eh? because dia ni ada sebab, contohnya lah, ada sebab untuk melakukan sesuatu. Alright. Okay, use the rule of threes. Uh, okay. Use the rule of three ni apa maksud dia? Basically, um, it's actually saying that you should, contohnya, you if you, if you want to uh, uh, adduce something which is of material fact, fakta yang uh, sangat penting, huh? fakta yang sangat penting, you normally ask it three times. Bukanlah soalan yang sama. Contohnya kata, adakah uh, pisau digunakan? Contoh, eh? pisau digunakan, saya kata, ya. Yeah. Okay, jangan stop at that 
Jangan cheat aja hazard. You have to ask further, okay. Pisau itu, adakah kamu nampak contoh eh? Adakah kamu betul-betul nampak pisau itu digunakan? Ya, yeah, dia. Sebab first dia kata, adakah pisau digunakan? Ya, yeah, betul. Okay. Second dia tanya, you tanya pula, adakah kamu nampak pisau itu digunakan? Ya, yeah, saya nampak. Huh? And then the third time you ask, uh, apa ni? Uh, contoh, contoh eh? Uh, how far are you from the, from the, uh, with uh, from the from the uh, apa ni tempat daripada from you and uh, the person who was holding the knife for example dia kata uh, about just about 5 meters away uh, maknanya dia memang boleh nampak lah. that's why at least if you want to stress on um uh, material fact you at least ask three things to confirm about the uh, existence of something macam macam tadi kita nak confirmkan the existence of the knife we ask at least three question not the same three question bukan soalan adakah kamu nampak pisau itu adakah kamu nampak pisau itu tiga kali no but you ask three questions which ultimately confirms that the knife has been used okay all right okay okay start strong and end strong okay um kalau dekat uh, Malaysia, uh, mahkamah tinggi, proceeding di mahkamah tinggi kita bermula dengan uh, opening speech. We start, we begin with an opening speech kan. Uh, lower court tak ada, right? Uh, but um, it doesn't matter. Uh, what is important is that, contohnya kalau di mahkamah tinggi ya, uh, if you are at a trial, uh, in a trial at the high court, your opening speech has to be strong. Plus that your opening speech also bears some weight. Okay, ada 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 um, the opening speech is just it's not just a apa orang kata it's not just a speech. Okay, it carries some weight. Right? Uh, you can read about uh, section 180 of the CPC ni nanti. I'm not sure you all dah go through ke belum, tapi uh, I'm sure this semester we we'll go through lah. Yeah, So 180 di dalam mahkamah uh, tinggi, uh, that's an opening speech. So start strong. Huh? Um, dia macam uh, submission at the earliest stage of the trial. Eh? Okay, and then the other one is end strong. End strong means basically for a trial, your submission has to be solid. Okay, so submission pun it's an art. Um, because submission can be oral or uh, written. But more often than not, kalau trial, um, trial yang um, besar-besar, apa, memang kita uh, diminta untuk menyediakan uh, written submission. Only small cases, mungkin kes-kes uh, di mahkamah magistrate, uh, itu barulah tak uh, do oral, uh, oral uh, submission saja. So if you are required to prepare a written submission, so make sure that your submission is strong enough to prove your case. Sometimes the words used there can also affect. Okay? And of course, during uh, most of the time, kalau dalam criminal cases, even though you have a, a written submission, uh, more often than not, the judge will allow you to orally submit as well. Okay? So you can either read, but to me, reading back the submission is not that good. But what you do is that you highlight uh, the strength of your case yeah? and uh, your submission. Right? You highlight, uh, you only highlight uh, the gist of your submission. You don't have to read the whole submission uh, uh, smaller. Yeah? Okay. All right. And then admit your witnesses. Okay. Sometimes um, you have to admit. Sebab kadang-kadang dalam kes kita pun ada kelemahan. Huh? We cannot deny it. Sebab uh, witnesses are human beings. Okay. They 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 also have Uh, their own uh, witnesses as well as um, sometimes uh, conduct of investigation pun ada kelemahan right but that is where you have to find a way to overcome the witnesses so even though you admit that there are witnesses in your case but you have to find a way to overcome it because law is all about arguments okay, mungkin satu uh, kelemahan dalam case tersebut doesn't mean that the whole case would come down okay Um, um, just because um, seorang saksi tidak hadir ataupun tidak hadir doesn't mean that you cannot prove your case. Okay. 
there is always a way to uh, argue around it. Yeah? And then use themes. Tema ni, ni, ni tertakluk eh, ni bergantung. This one doesn't apply across the board lah basically. Kadang-kadang, huh? um, uh, this is more useful uh, dalam case appeal jugalah. Huh? And then use chronological order. Ini yang paling penting sekali. That's why uh, the basic thing about a trial, before you go for a trial, you has you have to uh, understand and basically memorize uh, your case, your facts of the case. Okay, you can hafal, bukanlah maksud saya hafal every single statement ke apa, tak. You can hafal dia punya, dia punya chronology of the case. Okay, so kalau you ada case uh, dadah contohnya, you, you, you have no choice but you have to hafal daripada tarikh dadah tu dirampas sampailah dadah tu dibawa ke mahkamah. Okey. Uh, daripada dadah tu dirampas lepas tu dia buat apa? Dia serahkan kepada IO. Daripada IO dia pergi ke mana? IO mungkin serahkan kepada forensik. Uh, daripada forensik dia pergi ke mana? Serah balik kepada IO. Huh? Things like that lah. That one you you have no choice. Pada saya that one you have no choice. You have to Understand and memorize the chronological order. Why? Because kalau you tak, you tak master your facts, basically this is mastering your facts. Huh? If you don't master your facts, you akan jadi kelang kabut dalam perbicaraan. Okay? So you must, saya rasa daripada, daripada last semester pun saya cakap, uh, the first rule of thumb untuk perbicaraan, you have to master your facts. Huh? Okay? Use illustrations. Okay, illustrations stay good when trying to explain something. Okay. Um, illustration can be every, anything. Boleh lukisan, apa benda semua boleh, tak ada masalah. Mahkamah pun tak ada tak, tak, tak ada tak ada halangan when you say you want to you want to use illustrations, okay? Contohnya macam um uh, case chemical, eh? mereka ataupun uh, yang melibatkan uh, perubatan eh? uh, doktor contohnya, okay? Uh, dia nak datang dia nak explain parts of the body ataupun parts Uh, of the uh, apa ni uh, parts of your body lah contohnya kan so kadang-kadang dia boleh cakap nak apa uh, uh, medical term what is the uh, apa ni uh, nama uh, body parts tu okay. but agak-agak uh, kita faham tak kat mana body parts tu okay. kalau dia kata laceration um, kalau dia kata uh, apa ni uh, Uh, mungkin kalau kita cakap bruises, kita faham. Bruises tu general, generally kita faham it's macam uh, apa? lebam eh. Uh, bahasa Melayu dia lebam. Kalau dia kata laceration, apa maksud laceration? Okay. Uh, dia kena explain. And then kalau dia kata body parts, which part? Contohnya kalau bahagian, okey lah. Bahagian kemaluan wanita dia cakap macam tu. Okay. Bahagian kemaluan wanita ni bukan satu bahagian, dia ada lapisan, ada layer dia. So, those bahagian will have to be explained and Sometimes saya ada case yang um, saya pernah tengok dia buat illustration. Doktor tu buat illustration, dia explain, dia tunjuk. Dia lukis dan dia tunjuk. Alright. So sometimes it is good. Why? Because you need to make sure that the person on the bench understand. Alright. And then use language carefully. Okay. Use language um, dengan cara yang uh, sesuai lah basically. Alright. Uh, avoid Uh, using bahasa pasar. Hmm? Dalam mahkamah kita tak boleh guna bahasa pasar. Melainkan, eh? melainkan. Eh? Our witness is somebody yang memang tak biasa dengan bahasa-bahasa yang formal. Dalam mahkamah kita guna bahasa yang what we call it as formal language. Eh? Bahasa uh, formal. Tapi kalau kita berhadapan dengan saksi yang uh, kan, orang kampung, eh? yang uh, education mereka very low, then barulah you boleh gunakan bahasa-bahasa yang setaraf dengan Uh, pendidikan mereka. Okay. Tapi avoid bahasa pasar lah. Orang, orang kita panggil bahasa pasar lah kan. Uh, avoid bahasa pasar unless it is really necessary to make uh, people understand. Okay. okay, be professional of course. Uh, be professional ni uh, between you, between your colleagues, between uh, apa ni, litigators. Of course, dengan, antara you dengan judge, lagilah kena be professional lah. 
um, even with your witnesses. Okay? Some of these witnesses, they are very highly uh, ranked person. Eh? They memang somebody yang uh, high ranking person. Eh? Even uh, professional lah especially. Eh? You're really well educated apa semua. So be professional dengan orang. Of course, sometimes memang kadang-kadang they get on your nerves. Yeah? Showing that they are high apa, above us. You have to tell them we are doing our job, they are doing their job. Okay? And uh, be professional also with your mem uh, uh, with other litigators. Maknanya with the opposing party. Yeah? Uh, we are not there to uh, go into war. Well, I might say that we're going into war, I mean, but uh, we are there actually to seek justice. So be professional. Ada kadang-kadang um, defense counsel lah, especially yang agak agak apa orang kata uh, emotional. Belum apa apa lagi dah dah very ni. So uh, ada lah yang macam tu tapi tak ramai ya. Eh? But most of them are very professional because eh? we're just doing our job. Eh? Have a personality, okay? Uh, biarlah personality yang orang apa uh, uh, rasa comfortable with. Because when you have a good personality, a personality that people are comfortable with, it makes your life way easier. Especially if you are known to the judge, yeah? to be a very well-respected uh, counsel, well-respected DPP. Yeah? When you appear, when you have that kind of good personality, when you appear before them, they sometimes give the judge even manusia, they feel um uh slicer. They feel slicer. And sometimes, sometimes juga lah, especially kalau the judge, uh, judge atau magistrate tu uh, quite junior, dia akan rasa macam, oh, okay, I cannot, saya tak boleh main-main dengan uh, counsel, dengan DPP macam ni because they know what they're doing. Huh? So, you have to have a personality that uh, people will look up to you too, okay. Uh, that, that too you can, everybody has to um, basically um, experience themselves lah and how you, macam mana you bawa diri you is actually important. Um, jangan seek, uh, my advice is jangan seek popularity. Yeah. Popularity is different. Popularity and having a good personality is different. Popularity ni macam buat, buat apa, um, seeking, uh, um, pada saya lah, huh? seeking uh, apa visti murah, macam tu, tak payah lah. You just, sometimes ada, You know the person because dia selalu sangat keluar dekat Facebook ke atau selalu viralkan about a few things. Selalu voice out a few things. Some, uh, voice out your disappointment on things or on on issues. So, but that is good if you have strong uh, justification. Hmm? Kalau you simply keluar bla 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 put on Facebook tak ada apa tak ada tak ada justification. Uh, it's just nak cari publicity. Mm, sorry, sad to say lah, tapi um, that doesn't go well lah, especially with the judges. Dia orang pun uh, judges, dia orang pun manusia, eh? and then dia orang pun ada status. So they know what they are looking for. Eh? Dia orang hakim ni dia dia tahu dia tahu apa yang dia nak cari. Eh? And then watch your voice. Okay, uh, watch your voice is very very important. Uh, along the years that I've taught. Uh, criminal trial advocacy before this, I found that a lot of, uh, I mean, students uh, or even lawyers, they tend to uh, talk to themselves. Faham tak? Maksudnya dia dia bukan bukan tak keluar suara, tapi suara dia tu orang tak dengar. They tend to talk to themselves. Itu so, satu. Second thing is, dia cakap kuat, tapi dia cakap laju. Okay, bila you cakap laju, one thing, um, the judge might get offended, um, get annoyed, nah, sebab dia nak kena dengar. Sekarang ni okay, because you have CRT, because uh, the trial in in the courts are being recorded, ni hakim boleh tengok balik, kalau dia tak sure. Yeah? Tapi kalau zaman-zaman saya dulu, um, tak ada CRT ni. So we have to wait for the judge to write down. So bayangkan kalau you you as a judge you nak write down orang cakap kalau dia laju. Macam mana you nak tulis? Macam ni uh, tak sakit hati kan? Geram kan? So um, when you I mean I said watch your voice is one thing uh, speak loudly. 
supaya didengar oleh semua pihak. Bukan menjerit, eh? it's voicing out your voice. Second is slowly. Jangan nak kerja, jangan nak laju-laju. You, you, you are not there to to, to kerja apa apa pun. Okay. Um, and then of course, your voice has to be clear lah, eh? jelas. Eh? Jangan mumbling. Eh? Uh, you cakap tapi orang tak dengar. Eh? Mumbling dan macam tu. Alright. So watch your voice. Ini memang selalu uh, semalam saya tunjuk saya punya slide ni dekat my friend. She's a session squad judge. Dia kata, yang watch your voice tu highlight sikit kata dia. <laughs> selalu masalah. Um, counsel, uh, lawyers uh, yang suka mumbling sendiri kan? tak, tak, uh, dia tak tahu yang hakim kat atas sebenarnya tak dengar sebab some courts between the counsel and the bench dia agak jauh so make sure that kalau you duduk belakang-belakang tu make sure that your voice is heard okay? that's why um, um, I make it a point to arrive in court early so that saya boleh duduk depan right Be, be, apa ni um, apa ni council punya table tu banyak kan uh, tapi dia makin lama makin ke belakang so kalau dia lambat dia duduk belakang uh. so kalau dia duduk depan selalunya memang suara you memang mudah didengar lah tapi kalau you have a loud voice uh, boleh bercakap dengan baik uh, shouldn't be a problem lah kalau duduk ke belakang pun uh. okay always remember that the case is about facts not law because we are talking about trial lah so always remember case is about fact. That's why I said fakta kena master. Right? You have to master your facts. Okay? You have to get all your facts right. You get, have to get all your facts out of your witnesses. Okay? Make sure that your witnesses give you the facts that you wanted. Okay? Jangan tinggalkan apa-apa fakta huh? yang tak sepatutnya. Huh? Okay. Normally, uh, I remember masa saya mula-mula buat trial dulu pun uh, Tan Sri Azhar, he is Now is Tan Sri Azhar lah, dulu-dulu Dato' Azhar Dato' Azhar Muhammad, he was my uh, head of division Dia kata You make sure you read your facts And make sure that Your facts are all there in court Please regard the law first yeah. okay. Jangan fikir sangat bila you nak ten, bila nak yak, you nak go for trial dengan uh, pening sangat kepala about the law. Of course the basic law you have to understand lah. Okay but make sure that you get all your facts out. Right? And then always take the high road. <laughs> Apa maksud dia? Always take the high road. Okay. Basically dia, dia nak cakap kat sini uh, um, apa? don't take things uh, don't take shortcut lah. Uh, jangan guna uh, shortcut. Okay. So untuk trial tak boleh. Basically you have to you have to uh, kalau perlu ambil jalan panjang, jalan panjang but never take shortcut. Because there's no there's no such thing as shortcut dalam dalam perbicaraan. Right. Okay. So far okay. Eh? That's basically um, advocacy in general. Criminal tra uh, trial advocacy lah. Okay. Basically, it applies to both civil and criminal. Okay, civil dia mungkin ada additional things because dia dia lebih um, apa? Kata lebih uh, more focus on on um, documents, documentation. Eh? Dia lebih banyak focus on documentation, right? Criminal not so much because we have uh, uh, kita lebih focus kepada saksi ya, eh? pernyataan saksi semua tu. Okay, alright. So, um, language of advocacy ya, eh? language of advocacy. Apa maksud language of advocacy ni? It is basically what to say, apa yang hendak dinyatakan and how to say it. Okay, how to say it. Dalam mahkamah, kalau you selalu dengar kadang-kadang, um, you dengar perkataan yang, you jarang dengar dekat luar, orang luar tak akan sebut perkataan-perkataan tersebut. Contohnya macam much obliged. You don't hear that dekat luar kan? Orang public tak, tak cakap much obliged pun tak. Eh? <laughs> Selalu balik cakap thank you. <laughs> And kita pun kalau dengan kawan kita, thank you okay. But in court you don't say thank you. Yeah. Normally we don't say that. Walaupun it's not wrong okay but uh, I'm not saying that <laughs> benda tu tak salah tapi um, that is now not how we say in court. Eh? We have a certain standard. 
bila di dalam mahkamah kita ada certain standards ya. So much of large words that is you, 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 you um, dengar biasa dekat dalam, dalam mahkamah. I beg to defer. Okay. I beg to defer. Maksudnya apa? Kita disagree. Kita tak setuju. Tapi cara kita sebut tu very apa orang kata lembut. Ni ini memang uh, uh, language of advocacy. You don't you don't say uh, I disagree. Boleh cakap I disagree tu bukan it is it's not wrong. But um, dalam when talk about trial advocacy, uh, especially in courts, uh, we have certain languages, certain words that we use. Okay, um, apa ni? Simple thing as bila the, the the court set a date, eh? set a date for trial ke, for mention ke, and then they ask us, um, mahkamah mesti akan tanya sesuai atau tidak tarikan. Eh? Dan kita jawab sesuai atau tidak lah. Kalau sesuai sesuai lah, tidak tidak lah. So perkataan tu uh, might be pelik kepada orang luar lah. Uh, sebab saya pernah masuk court and then uh, keluar tu saksi saya cakap, oh mak dalam mahkamah ni perkataan dia tak sama ya puan kat luar. <laughs> tu bukan tak sama, it's just the way we say it. Kata. Uh, with due respect, perkataan-perkataan uh, macam tu lah, with due respect. Walaupun benda tu actually a common word juga kat luar kan, tapi orang luar tak cakap. Mungkin uh, secara betul lah mungkin ada. Tapi kalau di luar, uh, orang tak cakap. Huh? Tapi dalam mahkamah, contohnya with due respect. Huh? Itu benda yang common yang kita sebut dalam mahkamah. See? So, uh, this one you will grab bila you do your trials. Huh? Okay? Um, you akan biasa dengar perkataan-perkataan yang macam ni. Eh? Okay? Alright. Okay, um, the art of persuasion. Macam tadi saya katakan, basically uh, advocacy ni is actually the art. It's an art of persuasion. How you persuade people to to agree with you, to support you, or even to disagree with other people's statement. Okay, uh, so the art of persuasion. I can actually write and explain to you whatever that is in here, but actually the only way for you to Uh, to master the art of persuasion is for you to actually conduct trials in court. Experience, the way you uh, brush it up is only through experience. And you have to go to trial, you have to do trial. Huh? In what, what case? Huh? For these purposes, um, um, pada saya lah, I mean personally, this is to me, uh, doing criminal case will, will actually uh, provide you with a lot of these uh, opportunities untuk uh, mengendalikan uh, uh, perbicaraan di mahkamah eh. sebab um, uh, civil cases dia banyak dia banyak uh, berbentuk uh, affidavit uh, dia banyak berbentuk dokumen sometimes to reach uh, an actual trial uh, reach an actual trial dalam case civil ni lama uh, so long and i have um, uh, LA yang um, dah bertahun-tahun pun tapi baru buat satu dua trial sahaja. Okay, so it it, it is uh, uh, kalau you minat tak apa. Okay, tapi kalau you are into litigating, uh, doing litigation, proper litigation, you nak buat, you like to fight in court basically, try to do criminal because criminal. Um, Perbicaraan dia will take like what, within half a month after a person being charged, um, perbicaraan dah bermula. Huh? So that's where you brush up on your litigation skill. Okay. Um, tapi itulah um, nak, nak dapatkan uh, opportunity tu satu hal lah. Unless you become a DPP. Ya. Kalau become a DPP, setiap hari you kena pergi buat perbicaraan. Eh. So shouldn't be a problem lah kalau you jadi DPP. Okay, the art of persuasion um, is actually a negotiating process. A negotiating process and learning opportunities affording participants a path to share solutions. Basically, kita nak persuade, kita nak ajak somebody to agree with us, to support kita punya uh, apa ni, statement ataupun to support kita punya case. Or to make that person disagreeing with somebody, someone else's statement. Okay. 
That's why I say, however, it is often perceived as a form of manipulation or deception. It could be a manipulation, it could be a deception. It depends on how you look at it, right? Okay. Uh, it's a successful communication of an idea of one person to another. That's why I said, bila, bila kita nak somebody to agree with us. Dan kita nak communicate pada dia, idea kita. And then, bila dia agree, then ultimately, our idea is already agreed upon. Eh? With the result that the reader or listener ends up agreeing with the speaker or writer. Eh? Okay. Okay, bila you nak persuade somebody, what are you supposed to do basically? Eh? First thing, you have to look confident. Eh? Dalam mahkamah, you have no choice. You have to look confident. Because if you don't, the judge dah tahu dah. Budak ni tak pasti apa benda ni nak cakap. Terus dia human, kita pun human. If you look, look confident when you are speaking, sometimes even if it is wrong, eh? even if it, bukanlah, I'm, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but even if it's not entirely correct, not entirely correct, the judge might agree with you. Okay? Because there's no right or wrong in law, kan? And then thoroughly review your case or records, the importance of knowing your facts. Nah, ni saya tak payah explain lagi lah. Eh? Nah, understand your facts. So before, because before you nak uh, persuade somebody to agree with you, you have to know your facts first. Okay, kalau you, fakta you pun you tak ingat, no? fakta you pun you tak pasti. Macam ni you nak, nak get other people to agree with you. To support your facts, okay? that will not happen. Okay, do your research. Uh, ini tak ada choice lah. Eh? You have to be prepared. Okay? You have to do your own research. Sometimes, ah, ada sesuatu case tu you have to do your own, your own research. Okay? Be prepared. Uh, be prepared. It is ah uh, you you have to be prepared bila nak buat trial. Okay, you have to go through everything. Do your research. Do your research means sometimes because sekarang kita ada witness statement and witness statements uh, are given prior to the trial. Eh? So when you have the witness statements, you can uh, uh, also compare eh, statements between one witness to another. Eh? That's where you do your research. Okay? Affirmative and counter arguments. Be organized. Okay. Uh, bila you ada arguments that you wanted to highlight, make sure that you highlighted them, organize them so that it, it it makes it more easier for everybody to understand. Bukan diri you saja. It also allows the judge and also the other party to understand. Yeah. Theme. Okay. Ni kalau ada keperluan. Yeah. Okay. Know your audience. Know your audience. Okay. Know your audience ni termasuklah you have to understand who is your judge, who is your other party and also who are your witnesses. Okay. Um, yang paling penting sebenarnya, you have to know your judge. You have to know your judge. Because ada judge, dia tak suka um, orang yang um, tanya soalan banyak. Ada yang macam tu. Yeah? Ada judge, dia tak suka um, oh, sorry. ada hakim yang jenis patient. Dia boleh duduk, diam, dengar je. Okay. Kalau dapat yang macam tu, okey. Kita tak ada masalah. Ada setengah hakim, dia uh, tak, ada, tak ada tak ada expression pun. Bila kita make a statement ke apa, dia tak ada bagi apa-apa expression. Some judges dia jenis ada setengah. Bila kita ada soalan yang dia rasa, hmm, patut soalan ni tak tak tanya kan, contohnya ya. Dia akan buat muka. Okay, sorry. And then, ada setengah hakim, Dia tak suka you cite other people's judgment. Ataupun apa ni? Uh, judgment hakim-hakim tertentu. So you have to you have to know your judge. Eh? Right? Itu yang paling penting sebenarnya. Okay. Right. And then you have to also know your other opposing party. Right? Contohnya lah. Macam saya dulu. Bila kami tahu je, the late couple sing is supposed to be our opponent, hmm, semuanya gigil. <laughs> padahal, padahal dalam mahkamah, dia yeah, dalam mahkamah, dia tak tanya soalan banyak pun. Hmm? Tak tanya soalan banyak pun. Hmm? Dia, tak, dia tak cross banyak pun. Hmm? Masa saya jadi DPP dulu, he don't actually cross a lot. Tapi, bila dia tak cross banyak tu, kami susah hati. 
Sebab kita tak tahu where what what is in his mind. Okay. So bila dengar lelek ke apa sih, everybody was like, uh, semua macam takut. <laughs> of course lah, masa tu pun dia dah memang very well prominent lawyer kan. So uh, because he ended up bila dia buat submission, he's very good, he's an excellent person in in preparing uh, submission. Bila dia sum up, suddenly everything came out. Of course, he knows his law very well, lah kan? Uh, that's why. So because because he understand, he understood the law very very well. So it makes it easier for him to to actually it that is his way of manipulation. He tak tak tanya soalan banyak pun. Tapi bila when it comes to submission, his submission is ex, uh, is uh, really really good, awesome lah orang kata. Huh? And kadang-kadang you 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 will get caught during his submission. So. You have to know your audience. So kalau your, your audience, okay, uh, the late kapasin dia tak ada lah sekarang. Tapi kalau dulu, kalau the late, kalau kena case dengan kapasin dia semua macam uh, betul-betul study the law lah. <laughs> so you have to know your audience. Eh? And then respond to question. Okay, question can come from everyone, especially the judge. Okay, kadang-kadang hakim ni dia tak tanya, of course kalau fakta dia akan tanya pada saksi. Okay, tapi kalau certain things mana issue undang-undang kadang-kadang ada hakim dia like to they have the tendency to ask you contohnya dia tanya what is the general uh, uh, counsel or dpp what is the general rule about or the general principle on on tendering of exhibits okay. ha. dia tanya macam tu dia tanya kita tu eh? dia tanya the defense counsel so you have to know you know how to you must know how to respond so bila you want to know how to respond you kena belajar jugaklah ya you have to learn about the law as well. Eh? Refute the opponent's argument. Of course, this one memang lah. Itu tujuan utama kita lah. Tujuan kita to persuade our witness to refute the opponent's argument. Kita nak bat apa? Nak, uh, membatalkan atau me menidakkan uh, uh, argument uh, the other party. Yeah? Okay. 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 Alright. The art of persuasion. Dalam bentuk return persuasion basically written persuasion ni it refers to submission lah ya okey okey dalam your submission you also you else you also have to be organized basically ya so you can also persuade the judge to uh, agree with you by way of written submission okey dalam bentuk bertulis that's why walaupun sometimes you tengok kan bila perbicaraan tu rasa macam kes ni tak 50-50 tapi when it comes to submission if you are able to give a good uh, apa ni justification it will become a good written persuasion okay and how you do it of course you can master the facts lah okay begin with the introduction okay and uh, standard lah when you do submission apa-apa pun everything has to be uh, to begin with introduction and then fact section bahagian fakta Okay, when you have a fact section, you have to have a story. You can tell a story. You can tell. Okay, because this is a criminal case. You have to, uh, you have to explain. You can bagi cerita tu macam mana. Sebab kan, kan, don't be surprised that a judge may not have actually understand the facts of the case. Man, mungkin dia faham secara general apa, tapi the details tu kan, dia tak faham. So when you have a written submission. Daripada dia baca tu, oh nanti dia akan, okay, okay, now I understand. Like okay. And then, be organized. Ha, jangan jumble up uh, hari ni punya cerita dengan esok, ataupun hari ni punya cerita dengan lusa, lepas tu back to yesterday punya cerita, jangan. Okay, be organized. Kalau you nak, yelah macam kita baca buku cerita pun, dia ada kronologi dia. Daripada hari ini, eh, uh, apa yang berlaku hari ini, apa yang berlaku esok, apa yang berlaku after that, after that. So, be organized. And then be credible. Bila you tell your facts in uh, your submission, tell the truth. Okay. Cerita benda yang betul berdasarkan apa yang dinyatakan oleh saksi. Okay. Katalah saksi itu kata dia tak nampak pisau dipegang oleh accused. Okay. You tak boleh pula kata dalam submission you kata Bukanlah kata tak nampak, dia kata uh, saksi tidak pasti. Dia, sedangkan saksi dalam statement kata dia tak nampak uh, Q's pegang 
uh, pisau. Tapi dalam submission you kata saksi tidak pasti uh, accused pegang pisau atau tidak. That is wrong. Okay? You don't say it that way. If your witness says memang dia tak nampak, you letak situ memanglah dia tak nampak. Okay? So you have to make sure that your uh, written persuasion to uh, your written submission is also credible. Okay? Because ultimately the judge can actually uh, semak balik. Dia boleh semak balik. Sebab dia pun ada rekod dia sendiri. Eh, dia pun ada rekod dia sendiri, dia boleh semak. Okay? So you have to be credible lah. Right? And then next is the arguments. Arguments pun use organization. Okay? When you want to argue about something, dia ada heading dia. Use subheadings contohnya. Okay? Mungkin okay, first thing you want to argue uh, about burden of proof. Use the heading burden of proof. Okay. And then second is uh, elements of um, possession. Then explain the elements of possession and arguments that you want to put forward. Okay. Then any other arguments forward after that. And then next it, keep it simple. Sama lah. Huh? Keep it simple. Alright. Kalau dulu-dulu bahasa yang kita gunakan dalam menyediakan uh, submission, opinion semua, normally it's bahasa-bahasa yang quite, um, apa orang kata, bahasa-bahasa uh, literature yang agak memang cantik tapi kadang-kadang orang sangat faham. But nowadays, it is okay for you to submit using words that are simple untuk difahami. Tapi of course, perkataan-perkataan uh, legal Jargon tu you kena guna Ataupun legal terms you, you still have to use the correct one Contohnya um, Kalau bahasa, uh, bahasa English ni um, uh, Admissible Dalam bahasa Melayu kita sebut Diterima pakai okay, You still have to use the correct word Okay No matter how simple you want it to be but Certain certain uh, legal terms tu you have to use properly Right and then Next is the analysis. Dalam arguments you, instead of you having it organized, you can add analisa. Okay. Analisa ni normally refers to what has been said in court. Okay. A kata apa, B saksi A kata apa, saksi B kata apa contoh. If they are talking about the same uh, the same facts, eh? saksi A kata uh, apa, saksi B kata apa. So you analyze, you kata B is actually supporting the uh, facts and supporting the statement of A. Okay. So, kena ada analisis. You tak boleh simply kata, okay, A cakap ni, 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 ni. Okay. Saksi B cakap ni, ni, ni. Apa kaitan dia? Right. So, you have to kait between one witness statement to another. And also, uh, to connect a, one witness statement to the facts of the case. You tak boleh dia satu, you explain balik, saksi ni kata apa, saksi B kata apa, saksi C kata apa. No. You have to connect each one. You have to apply it back. Okay, kaitkan balik, ya. Yeah? Okay, alright. That is for advocacy. Uh, generally, it's about advocacy, ya. Yeah? Jadi, um, ada lagi ni lepas ni. Um, we're going to proceed with basic etiquette. Tapi saya rasa, boleh boleh continue ke ada yang nak diberhenti minum ke? Ke you all dah memang tengah minum pun? Dia sambung, ya? Eh? Bisa etiket ni tak lama. Boleh. Um, boleh. Boleh Puan. Kalau ada dia punya topik kat. Uh, were you given the topic for the 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 for this outline? You ada di, diberi tak topik uh, untuk khusus ni? Belum lagi Puan. Belum lagi eh? Okay. Untuk the first uh, the first week ni, your topic is actually introduction to advocacy skills in civil courts. Okay. Um, Antara topik yang I'm supposed to give to you is advocacy in general, um, language of advocacy, skill of persuasion, basic etiquette, introducing and addressing parties, addressing the judge. Okay, tapi pada saya, introducing and addressing parties together with addressing the judge, itu something yang practical that you have to do. Okay, uh, something yang you have to do in practice. Maksudnya uh, you tak boleh, uh, saya tak boleh cakap kat sini macam ni you nak buat. You have to do it yourself. Okay, so next time kalau uh, masa, hmm, when we have a face-to-face -face class nanti, then I will show you how to do it. Okay, 
right? Uh, but basic etiquette saya boleh uh, saya boleh explain lah. And then there's another topic about prosecution and defence. Okay, prosecution and defence since saya rasa semester lepas saya dah explain about the prosecution strategy, defence strategy, what needs to be prepared before the trial, what needs to be prepared prepare during the trial. Saya rasa ada last semester saya prepare, saya bagi kan untuk untuk uh, apa ni uh, defence dengan prosecution strategy before the the trial. Kalau ingat lagi lah. Ingat ke tak? Ingat lagi tak defense strategy semester lepas? <laughs> tak ingat. <laughs> tak pun aku je lah kalau tak ingat kan. <laughs> tak apa tapi uh, kalau um, it's okay I can forward you the same uh, slide. I can actually show you after this. Kalau you nak apa, I'll just give you briefly what it is for. But first we go for benda yang memang saya tak tak ajar lagi lah. Basic etiquette. Eh? Okay, alright. So I think kita proceed je lah ya. Okay, alright. Basic etiquette. Uh, since you open dah go through your professional course, kan? So, uh, apa tu? Uh, so basically, it's the same thing lah. Uh, tak ada visa sangat. Cuma I'll just specifically uh, explain to you uh, the court ethics in general. Okay. Alright. Uh, court ethics in general ni boleh didapati daripada laman uh, sesawang uh, kehakiman Malaysia. Okay. Okay. Okay, ni daripada laman sesawang Office of the Chief Registrar of the Federal Court of Malaysia ya. Eh. Dia dah ada dah kat situ, Court Ethics. Okay. Uh, kenapa dia tulis tu Open Court Etiquette? Okay. Sebab di Malaysia, uh, mahkamah court is open kan? Hmm. Mahkamah adalah mahkamah terbuka. Melainkan dalam keadaan keadaan tertentu, uh, mahkamah adalah tertutup. Okay. Right. So ni open court etiquette. Dia tak merujuk kepada um, apa, um, uh, chamber proceeding semua tu. Eh. Right. And this one is in general. This one terpakai secara general eh. Terpakai secara general. Termasuk this one is also applied to uh, witnesses as well. Bukan sahaja haki, apa ni, uh, lawyers eh. Termasuk kepada uh, public, termasuk kepada uh, witness. Eh? This is what they are supposed to comply with the court ethics. Eh? So basically, what is required, be present in the courtroom before 9 a.m. Or at any time fixed by the court. Ini mahkamah bermula jam 9 pagi ya. Ada zaman ada satu ketika dulu zaman Tan Sri Zaki kalau tak silap saya mahkamah bermula awal lebih awal daripada pukul 9 pagi. So maknanya kalau dia bermula pukul 8.30 ke pukul 8 ke you have to follow the uh, rulings of the court lah. Ha? The instruction of the court. Kalau mahkamah kata pukul 8 pagi you kena datang you kena datang pukul 8 pagi lah. Ha? Sebelum pukul 8 pagi ya before. Ha? Or any time fix by the court. Memang kadang-kadang ada perbicaraan bermula petang macam kes saya hari tu dia bermula pukul 2.30 petang. So I have to be there before 2.30 pm. Okay. Ataupun mahkamah kata, okay, dia dah set terus sebab dia tak nak. He doesn't want to waste any people's time. And that is good. Some judges are very good. Yeah, contohnya dia tahu pagi dia ada banyak mention cases kan. So dia kata kalau case bicara, okay, start, start terus pukul 10 atau 10.30. So that we don't waste our time. 
nak menunggu kan ha, menunggu and then witnesses kita pun uh, will come accordingly ya yeah? okey uh, rise and bow when the judge or magistrate enters and leaves the court okey ni terpakai pada semua bukan sahaja kepada lawyers tapi kepada orang awam yang hendak masuk atau keluar daripada mahkamah ya eh? you nak keluar you kena bow you nak masuk pun you masuk je pintu tu ya terus you bow to the to the judge but actually you not you are not bowing to the judge tau you bow to the bench you perasan tak dekat bench tu nanti dekat belakang tu dekat belakang hakim tu ada gambar agung hmm. akan ada gambar agung actually you are actually bowing to them not to the magistrate sebenarnya that's why hakim ataupun magistrate yang masuk kalau you tengok eh hakim ataupun magistrate yang masuk ke dalam mahkamah tu dia pun akan bow Of course dia takkanlah bau ke, ke ke belakang dia takkan pusing ke belakang tak tapi dia just akan bau juga. Okey. Ah. So basically they are not actually bowing to themselves and we are not bowing to them we are actually bowing to the to the bench to the agung kat belakang. Ha eh, giving respect. Right? Okay. Come forward when your name is called upon the, by the interpreter. Okey kalau macam you saksi ke eh, ataupun you accused no ataupun orang yang uh, OKT ataupun OKS orang yang kena saman When the interpreter call your name, you come forward. Okay. You sebab selalunya kalau saksi, saksi selalunya dia dekat luar. Dia berada di um, uh, bilik saksi. Tapi katalah macam you OKS lah. Eh? Orang yang kena saman ataupun orang yang kena tangkap. You berada, akan berada dekat public gal gallery kat belakang. Okay. So when the interpreter call your name, you have to come forward. Eh? Give your full attention during the proceedings. Okay. Um, um, jangan main-main lah kat belakang. Eh? Uh, kalau uh, public contohnya members of the family okey yang hadis sama dalam mahkamah you nak tengok handphone boleh tapi jangan main game lah dalam tu kan tiba main game tu kan tiba tiba ye menang something like goal something like ha, tak boleh lah eh? and more often than not dia tak pernah akan you pegang handphone pun sebenarnya okey of course dia suruh akan suruh handphone you silent eh? but the best way is to switch it off terus Okay. Kadang-kadang kita tak perasan pun handphone kita kita dah on kan dia punya uh, sound. Eh? Be silent during the proceeding. Nah, jangan borak-borak. If you want to talk, whisper. Itu pun jangan borak lah. Basically, you, you, if it is something yang really important that you have to ask as a, at the public gallery, you ask slowly. Okay. Even uh, among you, pun, uh, among council, mungkin you dua tiga orang, eh? you nak tanya a few things. Bikit, uh, apa ni, macam bisik-bisik lah. Uh, jangan bercakap kuat-kuat eh. Okay, bow every time you enter and leave the courtroom during the proceedings okay? Kalau pun you bukan, uh, you tak ada kes uh, Tapi you nak tengok, uh, you nak masuk Any court yang sedang berjalan, uh, yang ada sed uh, proceedings sedang berjalan You have to bow eh. No children are allowed in the courtroom unless instructed to do so by the court okay? Mahkamah tak, dalam mahkamah tak boleh bawa anak-anak eh. That's why kalau you pergi court, you tengok ada orang bawa anak tu Anak dia akan duduk di luar eh. No weapons are allowed, of course lah. Huh? No recordings, either audio or visual are allowed. Okay, uh, that's why, that's why dalam mahkamah tidak ada uh, apa ni um, reporter yang bawa kamera. Reporter boleh masuk, tapi dia tak boleh bawa kamera. Kalau dia nak, dia nak report, dia kena report secara manual lah. Okay, tulis dalam tab dia ke tulis secara biasa ke. Uh, tapi tak boleh record. Okay. Uh, mobile phones, pages and other electronic devices are to be switched off. Okay, this is standard lah. Eh? Okay. okay, then dressing etiquette. Dressing etiquette ni nanti saya explain lepas ni. Eh? Okay, documents required. Okay, self-identification of course lah. Okay, uh, sebab kalau you terlibat, contohnya UKS, OKS, OKT ataupun you are a witness, you have to bring your identity card. Tak kisahlah passport ke, eh? IC ke, you have to have an identity card. Eh? Kalau tak pun nanti kena tangkap lah. Kalau tak ada identiti kat. Ni kira sebagai parti ya. Okay, government officers. Government officers can also bring your authority cards. Or your relevant documents. Eh. Company owner. Okay. Company owner you have to have your company registration certificate relevant documents. Okay, ni mana-mana syarikat yang terlibat dalam perbicaraan. Eh. Company representative. Okay. Present the authorization letter. Property owner, ha. kalau you are a, uh, an owner of property, bawa lah grant ataupun dokumen-dokumen yang berkaitan. Eh. Okay, medical certificate. If you are unable to attend court for any reason, please inform the court promptly in writing. Okay. 
Okay. If you are sick, please forward your medical certificate to the court. Ah, uh, ini applies to everybody lah. Saksi, OKT, lawyer, semua. Eh? Kalau you sakit, supply with your medical certificate. Eh? Alright. Ah, uh, any other reason? Okay. If you are unable to attend court for any other reason, please inform the court promptly in writing. Okay. Kalau sempat lah. Kalau emergency memang tak boleh lah. Macam ni nak. Uh, uh, nak prepare in writing. Tapi contohnya macam kalau you uh, as a witness, okay, saksi ataupun uh, uh, you adalah uh, apa ni, OKT ke tapi you adalah pelajar. Contoh macam you all kan, uh, then you ada exam. Uh, you sediakan surat, tunjukkan, kepilkan uh, apa ni, uh, tarikh peperiksaan semua, kepilkan dan hantar kepada mahkamah. Selalunya kalau dalam kes macam ni, you dah, jadual tu memang dah ada kan lalu uh, apa ni your counsel akan forward kepada mahkamah lebih awal. Dia akan hantar surat kepada mahkamah untuk untuk um, postpone case. Itu macam you ada exam eh? so, dan sertakan sekali dokumen yang berkaitan supaya case tu boleh ditangguhkan. Okay. Boleh, tak ada masalah. Eh? Um, ataupun uh, apa? selalunya alasan-alasan macam itulah. Uh, students, uh, saya ada a few students yang really kena charge. Uh, dia orang tengah exam. Eh? So, <coughs> kita postpone case because uh, they are going through the exam lah. Huh? Going the exam. Kita pun tak ada, kita tak tak object lah the fact that they want to fix it kan. They are still students anyway. Okay. Alright. Uh, okay. Role and responsibilities of witnesses in court. Okay. A witness is someone who testifies in a cause or give evidence under the, 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 under the oath in a court of law. So a person who has been served with a subpoena must appear and testify in court. Okay, so siapa yang telah diser, di, 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 diserahkan dengan subpoena mesti hadir ke mahkamah. Eh. Failure to appear will cause a warrant of arrest to be issued. Yeah. Walaupun kita ni saksi, kita ni bukan uh, OKT, eh, bukan orang yang kena tangkap. So, tapi bila kita telah diserahkan dengan subpoena, subpoena untuk hadir ke mahkamah, tapi kita tak datang pada tarikh ditetapkan, warrant tangkap boleh dikeluarkan. Warrant of arrest may be issued. Okay, so when an or, uh, a warrant of arrest issued, then polis boleh tangkap you bila-bila masa je lah. Okay. The purpose of a witness presence is to present evidence orally or in documented forms with regard to effects so that the court can make the decisions. Okay. So if you are a witnesses appearing in court, make sure that you attend court according to the date and time issued under the subpoena. Yeah? Okay, what you should do before going to the court if you are a witness, make sure the date, time and place of the hearing lah, okay. If you are required to produce documents, make sure that you bring along uh, the documents uh, on the day of the trial. Um, plan your trip so that you could reach the court before 9am. Dress differently and appropriately. Okay. Okay. This one is if you are referring to a witness, responsibilities of witnesses when testifying given evidence in court. Eh? Uh, use simple language, uh, inform court kalau perlukan, uh, jurubahasa, interpreter. Eh? Take, take oath, okay? uh, use a loud and clear voice. Eh? Okay? Produce your identity card. That's why saya kata tadi, you have to have your identity card. Eh? Uh, listen carefully to the questions by the DPP or the attorney. Uh, and answer only when what is asked. Any question that is not clearly understood, seek clarification. Kita ada hak, as a witness, kita pun ada hak untuk uh, untuk dapatkan pengesahan. Yeah. Uh, make sure the answers and information given is honest and true. Okay? Uh, because you are under oath. You are bound to speak the truth. If the witness is unable to complete his evidence, the court will give another hearing date to enable the witness to complete his or her evidence. Okay, alright. Basically, this are the court ethics. This one, did, ini memang telah ditetapkan di dalam uh, telah ditetapkan oleh pihak mahkamah sendiri. Okay. So some of it may apply to the counsel, some of it may not. Because kalau witness, if you are not a witness, you are a counsel, it doesn't apply to you lah. But the general thing applies, yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Now dressing etiquette. Macam mana hendak berpakaian di dalam mahkamah? Okay. Okay, untuk public ataupun uh, witnesses eh. Uh, dress appropriately. Okay. Dress appropriately, preferably formal attire. So, kalau kita orang awam yang nak, nak, hadir, nak datang ke mahkamah atau begitu saksi, uh, kita berpakaian, sebaiknya berpakaian formal lah. Tapi doesn't mean that you have to wear a tie macam di office semua tu tak ada. Okay, sometimes even if you wear a t-shirt, collared t-shirt ke apa, as long as it, is, as it is appropriate. Macam kita pergi jabatan kerajaan lah yang kita nak dapatkan apa-apa berurusan dengan mana-mana pejabat kerajaan. Because uh, court ni juga adalah part of the government ya. Eh. Decent attire. Apa maksud saya decent attire ni? Pakai pakaian yang bersesuaian. Okay, jangan pakai pakaian yang menjolok mata. Especially orang perempuan. Jangan pakai uh, shorts, seluar pendek. And macam kalau you notice some Chinese girls ke pakai seluar pendek kan. Uh, itu tak boleh lah pakai pekot. Okay. Pakai baju sleeveless. Ni macam macam um, uh, macam singlet yang orang nak pergi jogging tu, nak pergi marathon tu. Uh, jangan pakai macam tu. Eh. Setengah mahkamah, dia ada specifically, dia akan tampal dekat depan dia punya pintu, kot pintu tu, dia akan tulis tu, apa pakaian yang tak dibenarkan pakai. Especially macam kes-kes uh, yang melibatkan mahkamah yang mengendalikan kes-kes uh, rumah tangga. Uh, apa ni? Um, ada seteng- uh, Saya pernah tengok dulu, dia siap cakap, um, perempuan mesti kena pakai jaket. Maknanya dia kena pakai, uh, tak boleh. Kalaupun dia pakai pakaian, uh, mungkin kita pakai pakaian office, tapi dia suruh pakai jaket. So dia so kena cari lah. So you have to know some 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 uh, specific court ada ada their own dress ni sebab uh, for their own reason lah. But whatever it is decent attire, tak boleh pakai pakaian basically tak boleh pakai pakaian yang menjolok mata lah. For government servants pula, you have to follow government rulings on dress etiquette for government servant lah. Ha? Kita yang kerajaan, you kena pakai lah. Ha, macam mana cara berpakaian uh, uh, berpakaian oleh kaki tangan kerajaan. Eh? Okay, dia ada surat arahan Ketua Pendaftar Mahkamah Sekutuan Malaysia bertarikh 12 November 2018. Ini in relation to uh, kod etika berpakaian hadir ke mahkamah bagi orang awam. Ha. Okay. Okay. Ini 12 November 2018. So benda ni ber, 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 uh, terpakai lah ya. Basically what it says ya, semua orang awam yang hadir ke mahkamah untuk sebarang urusan ya. Sebarang urusan hendaklah mengenakan pakaian yang sopan dan tertib. So, sebarang urusan tu termasuklah uh, menghadiri mahkamah ya. So sini dia tulis sopan dan tertib. So very decent. You tak boleh pakai menjolok mata macam tu cakap ya. Uh, bagi yang menjalankan tanggungjawab profesional di mahkamah, di malam berakhir peguam terikat dengan kod etika masing-masing. Ya. Baik. Okay. Right. Okay. Untuk lawyers ataupun prosecutors. Eh. Lawyers means termasuklah chamber students. Nanti bila you all nak start practice. You uh, kena go through this nine months of chambering. So, chambering student, lawyers, cara berpakaian, sama ya. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. Ini adalah arahan uh, Malaysian Bar Circular. If you are a lawyer, you are a chambering student, you are bound by this. Eh? Okay, Malaysian Bar Circular 267-2019. This one is the latest. Okay. Um, it, here dia kata, in light of the, this complaint, please find reproduce below the relevant portion of the circular dated 1st November 2000. Okay. 1 November 2000, uh, federal court issued circular. So, for Malaysian Bar, Malaysian uh, apa ni, uh, apa ni uh, all lawyers and chambering students, you have to comply with this. Okay. 
Okay, di sini dalam tu dia ada. Pakaian peguam di mahkamah. Okay, pakaian dalam mahkamah terbuka, di mahkamah persekutuan, mahkamah rayuan, mahkamah tinggi dan mahkamah khas. Mahkamah khas ni tahu kan? Mahkamah khas ni? Hmm. Tahu kan? Ha, mahkamah untuk yang melibatkan siapa ni mahkamah khas ni? Yang melibatkan raja-raja. Okay. Right, mahkamah khas. Okay. So what you can wear, kemeja dengan panjang warna putih dengan wing collar. Okay. Mahkamah tinggi ke atas, you kena pakai baju yang wing collar. Pernah tengok tak? Pernah. Pernah kan? Okay. okay. Wing collar. Dan bib. Dia ada bib putih dia tu. Right. Seluar panjang. Arahan ketuk penaftar ni. Seluar panjang longgar eh. Bukan tight sebenarnya. Tapi saya tengok sekarang lawyer semua pakai seluar. Sekarang fit. Fit. Style lah. Eh? Trend. Ikut arahan ni, it should be longgar. Eh? Warna hitam, biru kelasi ataupun kelabu gelap. Boleh ya. Eh? Jalur-jalur dibenarkan. Eh? Okay. Right. Jaket, warna hitam. Butang beras tidak dibenarkan. Okay. Butang beras ni tahu kan? Yang warna macam um, macam copper, macam gold tu. Tahu, tahu. Ha, okay. ha, yang butang perasa tak boleh pakai ya. Stocking, hitam, biru. dia. Yang stocking ni, dia follow. Uh, you punya, uh, apa ni? Uh, apa ni, seluar. Huh? Stocking tu dia follow you punya seluar. Sebab baju, baju putih kan? Right? Kasut warna hitam, biru, klasik, kelabu gelap pun sama juga. Dia follow your, your ni, seluar tu. Jubah, rope. Rope warna hitam sahaja. Okay. Pakaian di kepala, serban dan songkok dibenarkan. Okay, maknanya boleh pakai songkok eh, dekat dalam kot. Okay. Serban of course lah. Huh? And also uh, uh, yang orang apa sik tu kan, turban dia tu. Huh? Wanita, blouse. Kalau you are wearing blouse, it has to be white with pink color. White dan bib. Bib. Perempuan lain ya. Eh? Dia ada ni. Okay. Okay, kalau ikut sini ya. Eh? Blouse has to be white. Eh? Tapi saya tengok banyak juga yang pakai hitam kelabu tapi most of the court dia tak kisah sangat lah. As long as it's um, ni. Tapi kalau ikut arahan ni it has to be white lah. Okay. Skirt. If you're wearing skirt eh, it has to be black uh, navy blue. Huh? Biru kelasi is navy blue. Kelabu gelap. Dan labuhnya di bawah lutut. Okay. Kau Muslim mungkin tak ada masalah lah. Ha? Yang kita pakai tudung ni memang takkan pakai lah yang atas lutut betul tak? Ha? Tapi kalau yang pakai skirt non Muslim tu kena saya tengok. Tak labuh pun. Memang skirt ni atas lutut pun banyak. Hmm. Tapi tak tahulah lawyer sekarang. Ha? So seluar panjang sama. Warna gelap. Longgar dan tidak mendakap anggota badan. Kalau um, DPP ya, eh? DPP dia ada special instruction by uh, the uh, arahan peguam negara. It is ha it has to be a three piece suit. So kalau three piece suit means what? It has to be the same color as your jacket. So kalau dia same color as your jacket, jacket you hitam, you have no choice the pants seluar tu mesti juga warna hitam. Sebab mahkamah jaket you, you kena pakai warna hitam. Yeah. Of course, pakai yang tradisional. This is the easiest lah. Bukan berwarna garam dan tidak menjolok mata. Basically it's black and white. Or kalau ada kelabu ke apa, kelabu sikit. Tapi it has to be uh, pakai yang tradisional. Macam kita baju kurung. That is the easiest lah. Saya dulu senang memang pakai baju kurung ni lah. Baju kurung hitam putih macam tu lah. Sama kena ada. Dan itu yang paling senang sekali. For ladies lah. Jacket of course warna hitam, butang beras tidak dibenarkan. Eh. Sarung kaki nylon. This is optional. Kalau pada mereka yang pakai sarung kaki, it has to be warna kulit sahaja. Ini coklat lah. Skin color. Kasut uh, warna hitam, biru ataupun lagu pula. Sandal tidak dibenarkan di dalam kain. It applies to both. Lelaki perempuan. No sandals in court. Melainkan unless you ada masalah. Contohnya kaki you uh, kena bandage ke apa ke, you tak boleh, memang tak boleh pakai kasut kan. Uh, then that's another issue lah. Okay. Tapi that one is uh, acceptable lah. Eh? Kalau tidak, you have to wear shoes. Eh? 
Kalau ikutkan, it has to be court shoes. Faham tak? Court shoes ni. Court shoes ni kasut yang bertutup. Tak ada terbuka belakang apa semua tu. Nama dia pun court shoes. Okay. Right? And then jubah. Okay. Warna hitam. Rok. Sama lah. Pakaian di kepala. Maknanya kalau kita yang pakai tudung, warna hitam, putih, navy blue ataupun dark blue. Okay. Bunga yang tidak keterlaluan atau corak bercap dibenarkan juga. Okay, boleh. Maksudnya kalau kita punya tudung tu ada bentuk-bentuk, no, not a problem. Eh? And then accessory pakaian. Semua peguam ditegah memakai apa-apa emblem, ribbon, lencana, ikatan dan lain-lain yang melambangkan mana-mana parti politik atau bermotifkan politik. So kalau you nak pakai ribbon, yang bukan contohnya macam tu banyak ribbon uh, uh, apa ni breast cancer awareness ribbon warna pink pink ribbon tu tu boleh pakai okay because dia tidak melambang ataupun tidak bermotifkan politik that one is just advocating and supporting okay yang itu boleh tapi kalau emblem ribbon dan cana apa apa yang bermotifkan politik tak boleh dipakai pas punya emblem contohlah eh barisan nasional punya emblem okay whatever parti lah dia pakai itu tak boleh okay itu tak boleh dalam Mahkamah, ya. Okay, pakaian di mahkamah session Tadi tu mahkamah yang early on tadi Mahkamah tinggi dan ke atas eh. okay. Pakaian di mahkamah session, mahkamah magistrate Dan juga di di kamar Di dalam kamar mahkamah tinggi uh, Seperti di atas Tetapi tiada jubah okay. hmm, tiada, Tak ada jubah Kemeja putih bertali leher yang tidak berwarna garang Sebab kita tak pakai wing collar Dan tidak pakai bib Jadi kita pakai kemeja putih biasa dan Uh, bertali leher untuk lelaki ya. Bagi wanita yang memilih memakai tali leher hendaklah tali leher yang tidak berwarna garam. Tapi saya tak pernah jumpa lagi lah orang perempuan pakai uh, tali leher ni. Semua uh, semuanya pakai uh, apa uh, blouse biasa aja. Huh? Perbicaraan di dalam kamar mahkamah tinggi yang dijalankan di mahkamah terbuka. Okay. There are situation whereby it is actually matters in chambers. Okay. Tapi hakim nak dengar di mahkamah terbuka. Sebab kalau matters in chambers, you boleh pakai macam biasa jaket um, apa ni, without your robe dengan blouse ke apa tu uh, kemeja biasa. Okay. Tapi kalau tu case uh, sepatutnya dia uh, in chambers, tapi mahkamah nak dengar di mahkamah terbuka. So macam mana? Okay. Kalau ikut sini. Kes-kes itu masih kes-kes di dalam kamar. Dan pakaian taklah seperti yang ditetapkan di pelanggan tujuh mana. Ini sama macam you in chambers juga. You don't take that as a an open court. Sebab high court dia, open court dia lain kan? Ha, tapi kalau matter tu matters in chambers, tapi didengar di mahkamah terbuka, you can still wear your normal chamber uh, attire. Okay, tak perlu pakai bib, tak perlu pakai robe semua tu. Okay? Alright. So that is basically... Uh, dressing etiquette untuk lawyers dan prosecutors. Okay, uh, nation bar circular tu merujuk kepada surat arahan ketua pendaftaran mahkamah kesekutuan bertarikh 1 November 2000. So these are the two things that yang kita kena rujuk. Eh? So basically uh, ikut je lah. Uh, itu arahan. Arahan ketua pendaftar ni is actually arahan uh, yang kita perlu patuhi. Alright. So basically uh, itulah untuk first day introduction. Okay. Uh, introducing and addressing parties, addressing the judge nanti saya saya buat masa kita buat face to face. Eh. Alright. Uh, ada yang tak ingat tentang prosecution and defense strategy since we have about half an hour. Uh, saya share sekejap lah ya.
ओके sikit je ni about 14 slides saya rasa saya dah explain dulu kan criminal defense strategy sampai 2 hour pas mama so uh, defense uh, arguments with supporting evidence that defense attorney puts forth to secure an acquittal of freedom of his or her client okay. uh, the concept springs from uh, innocent until proven guilty so everybody has a right to be defended lah Okay. Um, okay, develop strategy after sifting through all evidence Okay, and hearing the accused version Basically, ini, ini standard lah eh? You have to go through your evidence Then you have to go through your case And then you have to hear from the mouth of the accused himself Okay, kena dengar cerita dia Accused must provide the truth Walaupun the truth is actually the the committal commission of the offence. Okay. Dia akan cerita dia kata, okay, I did the offence. Okay. But why? Sometimes there's a reason for it. Okay. So you have to get the truth. Why? Sebab kalau you, you don't get the truth from him, you akan susah kalau tiba-tiba ada evidence which is strongly against him. Okay. Okay. Plus, the truth will could lead to the bargain. Conviction on a lesser charge or a finding of not guilty. Sebab kadang-kadang, some people do things for a reason. Ada sebab. Okay. So you have to know the reason why he or she did that. Okay. Pilih bagian? Dah belajar dah pilih bagian. Ke lepas ni belajar dengan Datuk, Datuk, <laughs> Datuk Rosli. <laughs> One seven two. C. Hmm. Uh, section 172 okay. uh, Conviction on a lesser charge okay. uh, Kita boleh mohon Untuk apa ni Supaya pertuduhan dia dikurangkan okay. And also could lead to a finding of not guilty Sebab sometimes ada Orang buat sesuatu ada sebab dia okay. eh? Dan sebab dia contoh macam dia gila ha, Main gila ke Atau he was provoked okay. Ataupun uh, In self-defense Memang dia, dia menyebabkan kematian seseorang tetapi it was done in self-defense. Bila you do something, you did something in self-defense, it might lead to a finding of not guilty. You mempertahankan diri you. Walaupun menyebabkan kematian orang itu. Okay. So you have to know the truth. Okay. Um, the accused story of version. Okay. It could be a confession story. Okay. Memang dia cerita sendiri. Dia cerita sendiri apa uh, apa yang berlaku yang dia kata memang dia commit the crime contohnya lah, tu memang dia cerita ataupun denial story, accused completely denies the crime, dia kata saya tak buat I did not do the crime, I did not commit the crime mungkin dia ada alasan, dia mungkin ada alibi or something like that ataupun dia admit and explain story admit and explain maknanya dia buat, tapi dia kata dia buat kerana something something, something. right dia buat kerana apa-apa-apa. Dia buat kerana dia di dipaksa contohnya lah. Dia buat kerana dia diprovok. Okay. He admits the conduct but it includes legal differences between the prosecution and the defense. Okay. Alright. Okay. Our strategy as a criminal defense lawyer, what we do is that our strategy has to contain consistency with the evidence provided. Okay, sebab sekarang kita ada uh, discovery of document. So kita, uh, defense will be provided with the documents that the, the prosecution will uh, submit in court. So we have some of the evidence. Okay, yang kita tak ada hanyalah uh, witness statement at the earlier stage ni kita tak ada. Eh? Okay. Uh, our strategy must also contain gaining the sympathy of the judge. Kita kena make the judge feel sympathy. Feel sympathetic to our, to our accused, to our client. Biar dia rasa, because he, he or she is a human being So dia pun ada rasa simpati Kenapa orang ni buat macam ni kan And to explain why the events in question took place okay. Kenapa he committed the crime Macam saya cakap tadi, self-defense Orang tu attack dia ataupun he was in self-defense The person was trying to rob him Something like that But uh, kita punya defense setelah menyebabkan kematian dia Contoh lah eh okay. Credibility of the defense and prosecution witnesses. Ha, ini penting sebenarnya. 
Okay, we must sebaik mungkin must show that our defense or our defense witnesses are credible, should be believed. Okay, whereas the prosecution witness, especially yeah, the star witness, too, cannot be believed. Right, show that he or she or the prosecution witnesses are not credible, not credible, shouldn't be trusted. Okay, so that is part of our strategy. Yeah? And then which community attitudes towards the crime. Okay, memanglah, uh, basically community will some uh, will afford some kind of uh, perception. Contohnya untuk case-case, untuk case-case yang uh, melibatkan uh, uh, apa ni, perempuan, wanita. Okay, okay. mungkin um, a, a, a lady, a lady, yeah, a lady is being charged for committing uh, apa ni, uh, manslaughter. Mungkin dia menyebabkan kematian suami dia contohnya. But what we do is that we put in evidence to show that she is actually a better wife, istri yang di dera. Contohnya, so community will have the tendency to be um, orang awam ataupun uh, community akan rasa lebih simpati kepada isteri yang didera walaupun she is now the accused so those are the things that we have to um, uh, kita kena fikirkan kita kena add in in our strategy eh, as a defense counsel okay of course uh, as a criminal defense lawyer pun kita ada ethical rule okay um, never encourage or help an accused to lie under oath Kadang-kadang okay. uh, ni susah sikit nak, 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 nak tolong lah. Kadang-kadang bila dia kata memang dia buat. Hmm. Especially kalau dia confess. Confession punya. punya eh. Kata memang dia buat. Contohnya kalau dia kata dia rape anak dia. Macam mana kita nak? Macam mana kita nak kata? Nak nak, nak cakap dengan dia? Macam mana kita nak nak give uh, some kind of assistance in telling him not to say that he did not uh, rape the daughter? Susah kan? Macam mana kita nak cakap? Lain dia kalau dia rape somebody else. Yeah? Not part of a member of the family kan? Bila lah kita... Uh, they do it consensually kan? Huh? Consensual. Tapi kalau anak sendiri, macam mana nak kata? Nak cakap dengan dia apa? <laughs> kan? uh. So but... What we do is normally we try to... Of course lah. More often than not, we have to ask him to say that you did not do it. Just to deny. We are not, kita bukan suruh dia tipu tentang fakta dia that to, to deny it happen. Itu je. Okay. So, certain fact, so you have to actually tengok betul-betul. How to. Okay. Tapi kalau kadang-kadang bila, because it is a case where it is a, a, a pure case yang kita rasa ada, memang ada strength on the prosecution case kadang-kadang, that's why kita lead tu. Kita minta supaya dia uh, either plead guilty. Ada case yang kita kata Memang, we have no choice. Evidence, kuat. Um, although they have the right to be, although they have the right to be defended, but they also have the right to know that they are right. Okay. Okay. Should not call witness whom he or she knew will lie in the extent. Okay. Uh, Sama lah dengan saksi. Okay. Tadi tu accused. Now is kita nak saksi. Tapi kita tahu saksi ni akan menipu ah. Ha? Because sometimes bila you menipu ni dia senang untuk uh, mudah untuk diketahui bila kena cross. So bila kena cross dengan DPP nanti kan tiba-tiba dia fumble. Ha? dia tak tahu macam nak cakap because something that you created uh, bila dia di, di, you don't go into details of it. So bila cross cross in the, you are being crossed in detail. So bila kena cross dah tak tahu apa nak cakap. So ended up the witness would be lying and he or she will not be deemed credible witness. Okay. Even if you know that your client is guilty, the defense counsel can always cross examine prosecution and poke holes in the prosecution case. Okay. What we do is we go for uh, Technicalities lah basically. Things on technicalities. Okay. Uh, 
that one you have to understand the law and where to um apa ni uh, to attack okay because if you understand the law then you tahu mana nak attack okay okay prosecution is required to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt and defense only need to cast a reasonable doubt. So what you do is to make sure that there's a doubt in the prosecution case. Itu je. Sebenarnya defense case. Defense defense punya um, um, uh, burden of proof ni senang sikit. As compared to prosecution. As long as you are able to cast a doubt, then the prosecution has failed to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt. Okay, how to cast a reasonable doubt? Demonstrate bias on the part of the prosecution ministry. He or she may be lying. Credibility lah. It goes back to credibility. Expose law enforcement mistakes and non-compliance with provision of the law in gathering, maintaining and testing of physical evidence. Ini penting. Especially kalau kes-kes yang in possession, uh, possession of uh, drugs, eh? possession of uh, apa ni? Uh, poisons, eh? apa-apa yang melibatkan, kes-kes yang melibatkan kesalahan pemilikan. Eh? Challenge the believability of a witness's story on the grounds of logic or common sense. Okay. Cerita dia tu tak logik. Cerita dia tu doesn't make sense. Okay. Uh, okay. So you challenge on that. Okay. Yang itu untuk defense. Right. Untuk prosecution. Sekejap ya. Okay, untuk prosecution ni saya skip terus untuk plan of action for trial eh. Yang uh, earlier on tu, nanti you all boleh baca je lah. Okay, okay. Ha, macam tadi eh, sama juga. Know your judge. Tadi saya dah explain kan, know your judge, know your opponent. Okay, understand the facts and evidence of the case thoroughly. Uh, if case involve bodily injury, ensure to adduce evidence of the victim or complainant first. Okay, menyebabkan uh, uh, apa uh, kecederaan pada bahagian badan. Eh. Contohnya, hurt. Somebody is uh, charged with causing grievous hurt. Okay. Reduce evidence victim dulu. Supaya apa? Memudahkan hakim faham jalan cerita. Okay. Kalau melibatkan vol voluminous documents or exhibits, ensure each document or exhibits are tended in an orderly manner. Okay. Tender according to the relevant witnesses. Okay, jangan lompat-lompat. Pening nanti. Okay, especially yang melibatkan voluminous documents ataupun exhibits. Uh, calling of witnesses at trial. Formal witnesses should give should give evidence first. Ini macam saya dah cakap dulu. Selalu formal witnesses ni refer to contohnya chemists, uh, government servants lah normally. Uh, doctors, storekeepers, uh, Kita panggil dia dulu eh. Followed by any other witnesses that is able to give a clear picture of the whole case. Yeah? Avoid postponing the trial to prepare for submissions or on any issues that may be raised by the defense counsel. So uh, sebelum pergi mahkamah, you dah kena prepare, uh, you dah kena anticipate objections okay, by the defense counsel. Um, maintain professionalism, integrity and objectivity. Okay, professional macam tadi eh. Integrity. Okay. Be honest yeah. and objective. Be objective. Yeah. Communication during trial. Different witnesses, different style, language approach. Okay. Communication. Macam tadi saya cakap kan. You should use formal language dalam mahkamah kan. But 
Ah, bergantung juga eh. Bergantung kepada saksi yang kita panggil. Depends on the witness that we are calling. For example, kalau dia saksi kanak-kanak. Saksi kanak-kanak, you have to use words or languages that is suitable for their age. Kanak-kanak lima tahun. Child of five years old as opposed to a child of 16 years old. Okay, lain. And then um, orang kampung. Pakcik, makcik kat apa-apa. Dia, dia tak faham kata perkataan yang formal. You can use proper languages. Okay. But if it involves normal witnesses with a good education semua, you have to use the standard language. Eh? Standard, kalau dah masa mahkamah, uh, bahasa Malaysia lah. Eh? Standard BM, eh? bahasa Malaysia. Uh, preparation of documents for trial. Prepare relevant authorities on any facts or issues that may rise. Okay? Issues on section 27 contohnya, eh? section 27 of the Evidence Act. Facts leading to discovery. Yeah? Prepare your facts, uh, prepare your cases on that. Yeah? Authorities. Prepare enough copies to be tendered in court. Yeah? Prepare list of witnesses and prepare facts of the case. Facts of the case are used when the accused wanted to plead guilty. So, bila kita attend court, prepare dah facts of the case. Sebab kalau tiba-tiba dia nak PG, we do not have to postpone the case. You can straight away dispose of the case. Mahkamah pun senang. Okay, uh, statistik dia orang clear. Yeah? Okay, prepare opening speech. This one, this one is in uh, is in regards to High Court Trial 179-180. Okay, prepare written submission or skeletal submission on any issues of law that may arise. Okay, written submission. Prepare skeletal submission at the end of prosecution. Prosecution case. Okay. So dah ada skeletal. So bila tiba-tiba perbicaraan tu tamat, then you can straight away do your submission. Supaya cepat perbicaraan boleh diselesaikan. Okay. General preparation for prosecutors. Ensure the followings are brought with you to court. IP, investigation papers. Documents or anything or facts of the case. Fingerprint reports, money. Basic questions for witnesses. Questions for witnesses ni need not be question yang sebiji-sebiji apa yang kita nak tanya. Sometimes it's just dalam bentuk skeletal je. Kita note apa benda soalan kita nak lepas saksi ni. Okay. Relevant statutes, relevant authorities, books or reference material. Okay. I remember um, uh, uh, saya pernah attend one course uh, where a defence counsel gave gave a lecture. Um, belum start lagi dia bagi lecture tu dia dah, dia dah letak stack of books. Huh? Tahu lah buku buku uh, buku buku uh, legal ni kan tebal-tebal kan. So tiba-tiba dia letak stack of books dekat meja tu. Tiba-tiba dia ni. Betul dia tanya. Are you scared looking at the books? Okay. Ha, semua kata, ah, terkejut juga lah kan. Everybody was like, hmm, terkejut lah. Kenapa pula kan? So dia kata, that is actually a form of uh, strategy dia. Kata. Kalau di mahkamah, dia kata dia selalu bawa several books. At least tiga empat buku dia bawa. And then dia stack up. Dia kata, why? I want to intimidate my uh, my opponent. Okay. Why? Because dia bila dia letak buku-buku tebal-tebal tu, banyak tu. Tiba-tiba uh, 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 di order parti macam, eh, wah macam-macam ni. Macam, rasa macam takut, gerun kan. Uh, that is actually his strategy. Okay. So, uh, apart from being it, uh, books can be a reference material, you can also intimidate the other, your, your opponent as well. Okay. okay, always be early in court. Okay. Tadi pun kita dah belajar, etik kata before 9 o'clock. Or before the time set by the court. You have to be in court already. Okay. Okay, alright. So, I think yang tu je. Ini, ini slides yang di finger satu. So, okay. Okay. So, that is all for today. So, macam mana? Okay tak? Nak start dengan criminal trial advocacy. All these lectures semua standard je lah. Tapi nanti the actual um, the actual um, uh, practical simulation tu uh, yang itu uh, will be handled will be handled based on a smaller group. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether you have been explained or not by uh, uh, your, your lecturers, but um, for this course, for the first seven weeks before you open your semester break, it will be all be in form of uh, ni? lecture lah, macam, macam ni lah kan, it's either face to face ataupun uh, online. But after your semester break, it will, you all will be divided into uh, groups. Okay, saya tak pasti berapa group nanti, List ni saya rasa akan diberikan. Um, 
and two groups uh, each group uh, dia bukan ikut firm eh dia ikut groups so two groups akan be uh, it will be handled by uh, a practitioner okay because it's for the next uh, seven weeks uh, after you punya semester break you will be given a case macam saya bagi dulu kan uh, saya bagi case tu uh, apa ni the whole stack of cases tu saya bagi tu so you will be, you will be given a case also the same uh, i'm not sure whether it's going to be the same case ataupun case lain but um, you will be given a case and you shall prepare for that case for the purpose of a mock trial pernah ada buat mock trial tak sebelum ni ada tak nah nah ada eh? Uh, pernah. Complete Waktu one. Subject mode. Uh, complete one eh? A complete trial tak bukan a specific, uh, specific uh, for a specific apa uh, topik ke apa kan ni? A complete one. Ada tak? Ada tak? Ada ke tak ada? Ada. Ada eh? Ada. Uh, so kalau you all dah go through that, okay lah, should be no problem lah kan. So the same thing here, um, kita akan prepare you for, so nanti you will be divided into two groups, uh, into, into groups lah. So each, uh, akan ada dua group who will be handled uh, by a practitioner. So uh, I'm not sure how many practitioners has been appointed, either tiga atau empat orang lah. So um, I will take two groups, my colleague will take another two groups, uh, and another colleague will take two groups so from there uh, you will be you will prepare your case which has been given for the purpose of the trial and from there also you will uh, you will conduct your trial sebagaimana you conduct perbicaraan macam you conduct perbicaraan dalam mahkamah there will be a judge there to see and uh, judge you okay so everything, maknanya everything masa mock trial tu you have to follow sebagaimana you are seorang uh, peguam bela ataupun timbalan pendakwa raya sebab because our, yang saya punya ni criminal trial kan uh, so it's either, either you are DPP ataupun you are defence counsel okay so for the next seven weeks after the semester break the uh, appointed uh, facilitator will guide you okay on how to prepare the documents on what uh, for the uh, on how to question witnesses, how to think the exhibits more for the purpose of the mock trial. Okay? Okay, yeah? alright? Uh, because in, nanti dia akan bagi markah. Okay? For the facilitator pun akan bagi markah and at the same time, uh, the judge masa mock trial tu pun akan bagi markah. Okay, this is where you uh, but in the final year kan? Uh, this is where you put everything that you have learned into practice. Okay? Right. So hopefully um, by the time you all graduate, uh, LPQV dah uh, dah hmm, apa ni, iktiraf mengiktiraf uh, apa ni uh, FSU punya ni lah degree. Okay? So that you do not have to go through CLP kan? So um, just sekarang you have to go through CLP kalau you nak buat uh, nak practice kan. So hopefully by by end of this uh, by end of your uh, semester nanti by the end of your second semester nanti uh, LPQB dah and only certif ni? certification of for, for ni lah for FSU punya degree eh. So ada soalan? I think you ada kelas kan lepas ni? Ada. Ada. Ada apa-apa soalan? Uh, untuk kita punya subjek yang ni kan? Ya. Yeah. Mana dia final exam ke ataupun... Ada tak ada exam, tapi dia hanya akan ada mock trial. The mock trial tu akan uh, ada mahkar lah masa tu. Uh, dia pemakahan uh, masa mock trial tu, I think mock trial tu uh, quite a lot jugalah. Tapi dia akan ada juga, um, uh, there may be uh, written assignments ataupun presentation yang kita akan minta you prepare for the purpose of um, uh, apa ni, marking okay. selain daripada mock trial but dia tak ada exam uh, permakahan adalah berdasarkan kepada uh, mock trial dan juga uh, kerja yang kita 
pagi during the during the whole course. Okay, so tapi dia tak ada exam. Tapi sebenarnya kalau ikutkan uh, mak cerai ni lagi uh, stress daripada exam sebenarnya. Okay, so because you have to prepare your case, you have to prepare your documents, everything. Okay. So, ada apa soalan lain? So, kalau tak ada, um, thank you very much. So, next week, insyaAllah, we'll meet again, uh, online again. Sebab kalau as far as I was informed, uh, probably, probably, eh, minggu ketiga ataupun minggu keempat baru akan mula face to face. Itu, ber, itu pun tertakluk kepada KPT punya arahan kan? Uh, okay. Uh, dan hopefully saya punya PKPB ni pun uh, tamatlah kot. Ah <laughs> uh, so kalau kami PKPB tak habis lagi susah jugaklah kan. Ah uh, hopefully okeylah. Uh, so uh, with that um uh, all the best okay. Um insyaallah uh, the other facilitators are practitioners memang saya kenal anak buah saya dulu. So they are very very uh, good uh, lawyers right now. So dia orang ada dia orang pun memang ada pengalaman STPP and as well and also as a prosecutor uh, body uh, as a defense counsel. So it's good that you get uh, both sides punya dengan ni ya. experience uh, uh, facilitators. So uh, thank you very much. I will see you all um insyaallah next week. Okay. Um tak apalah kalau saya tak sempat, kalau saya tak dapat nak buat kelas uh, pukul 8, are there any ada time yang mungkin saya boleh saya boleh slot in tak selain daripada pukul 8 hingga pukul 10 ni. Macam tak ada video. You all semua penuh sampai hari. Sepenuh sampai petang. Macam hari Khamis pun. Then the rest tu ada tutup lah. Tutorial eh. Tak apalah. Kalau kalau there is a there is a time when I cannot make it on Friday, I will, saya minta maaf lah tapi saya kena buat mungkin hari uh, either Saturday or Sunday lah. Huh? Because memang ada, sat, ada satu dua date yang saya untuk Friday tu saya tak boleh. Uh, so kalau yang tu tarikh yang kena tu, uh, saya mungkin kena buat uh, hari Saturday lah. Huh? Huh? Uh, tu saya tak dapat nak elak lah. Uh, because saya pun praktis kan. Kadang-kadang uh, ada kes uh -huh. saya tak dapat nak elak. Uh. Tapi Saturday Sunday you all tak ada kelas kan? Uh, setakat ni tak ada lagi. Tak ada lagi ya? Ha, okay. So kalau if I have to then I will inform lah. Okay? Okay alright. Okay alright. Okay. Okay bye. Okay Assalamualaikum. Thank you very much everybody. Assalamualaikum. Thank you madam. Thank you madam. Thank you madam. Thank you madam. Have a good day everyone. <laughs> Thank you madam. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.